Bay Rizal is a prosperous municipality for its fame when it comes to the garments and textile industry, thus having the title Garments Capital of the Philippines. But did you know it is the home of one of the most scenic and relaxing resorts? What's up, Shannon? I am Chelsea Soriano. And I am Ruthie Mae Flory P. Santa Ana. And welcome to the Enchanted Escape. I think I want to marry you. This is the perfect place for vacation, family outings, birthday events, and other special experiences shared with those we love. The resort in question radiates liveliness and offers stunning visuals is none other than Louise Resort. Here you can enjoy the fulfilling experience from picturesque scenery down to its accommodating staff. It is something you never want to miss out on. <laughs> Louise Resort has been around for 11 years since 2012 and it is located at Taytay Rizal. And here we will talk about this hospitality business that provides enchanting escape from our mundane routines. All but it is begin with a small packet of dream within someone's hearts that soon to be blossomed into a vibrant aspiration. Like other businesses, Louis Resort started as a small seed of a dream that eventually grew into a wonderful plant that bear the fruit of the hard works of the people who cultivate it. As such, to understand more about this resort, we should start with the people behind the curtains. So join us in our journey to learn more about Louis Resort. Good day everyone, I'm Uno Perez and here with me today is Kyra Tobias and we're here at Luis Private Resort in Tai Tai Rizal okay. um, Would you like to tell a little bit of history about this resort? Sure, um, the resort initially it wasn't supposed to be a resort so my family owns this business and my parents um, decided they want to invest in a property where they can use it for farming for like leisure for for their use only oh. so that's the first um, idea when we, when they purchased this lot when did it start that you wanted it to become a resort we're after a lot of brainstorming and since my parents have uh, I mean all of us have a lot of friends and they want a place where they can gather and they can um, used for team buildings also. So um, they made it into a resort already. So in 2011, the resort was built. And then in 2012 is when we officially launched Louis Private Resort. What was the reason or the motivation behind the creation of this resort book? Actually, when they had this idea, my mom has uh, recently retired back then. So they wanted to do something or like she wanted to have something that she can do while well, she's already retired because she wala na siyang gagawin for every day so like they came up with the idea with the resort so that she can have something to handle while being retired already and it's like ano po, a, a passive income po. yes earlier you mentioned that Luis is the name of the resort mm -hmm. How did you come up with that name? Um, actually, my sister and my second name is Louise. So that's where it came from. Oh. Uh, we would like to know about the mission and vision of your resort. Po. Would you care to share it with us? Sure. The mission of our resort is to provide relaxing, affordable, and outstanding private resort facilities to our guests. And our vision is to become one of the most sought-after private resorts in Rizal. When starting this business, po, what were the businesses that you sought for to complement your own business? We wanted to give options for our guests, like suppliers. So that was the main ones. Caterers and mobile lights and sound, since our place is for events. So that's... What we wanted to provide for guests for easier options. At the very start of the resort, po, what was it like? Did it already look like this, po? or you went renovations as you went along the way? 
Yeah, it wasn't like this before. We already had many renovations through the years. So um, before, the event hall was actually just a tent, not even like a concrete or... It's an open ground. Like ball. open grounds with grass and the tent, tent that tent. usual. Na kinakabit lang na ganon. And then it evolved into a covered hall with a roof already. And then just last year, we finished the event hall that's already air-conditioned. We appreciate your insightful explanations about the history of your resort, Miss. Now we would like to know more about the nature of your business. What type of business organization does your resort implement? Okay, so our resort is a private resort, a best place, and we are a single proprietorship. Now, as a business owner of this very beautiful resort, what do you think are your social responsibilities to the society and as well as the environment? Okay, so um, here at our resort, we strictly implement um, waste segregation. Um, um, of course, that, that is our duty for the environment. And um, aside from that, um, we also maintain the cleanliness and upkeep of the surroundings of the resort for our subdivision. Mm -hmm. And um, as for health and safety of our guests, we always um, make sure that all our um, amenities and facilities are well maintained. And uh, we make sure that, of course, the pool, which is what all Filipinos fun swimming. So we make sure that um, it ha it is well treated. So tama like the treat and water. And there are visible signages in the resort regarding the, how deep the pool is or like um, guidelines on how House rules. Yes, house mm -hmm. rules, correct. And um, since the pandemic, we also provide alcohols and, of course, before we have soap na and everything, but we had added alcohol for um, extra cleanliness. And for our employees, um, we also, of course, apart from giving them minimum wage, mm -hmm. we uh, provide them with medical checkups. And we also help them during their sickness and provide them loans without interest so that um, to help them during difficult times. Great benefits right there. But Miss, do you think Louise Resorts lack something that you think other resorts have? Um, definitely our business is not perfect. I think what we lack is um, offering more packages or more options for our um, customers. Like, for example, maybe partnerships with... Because we, we are an events place. Mm -hmm. So I guess we need to provide them more of options on packages. Like weddings, for example. Like sound systems. Yeah, so nila, like, some clients want our all-in-one package mm -hmm. now with the event. Because right now, we only offer like venue only. And then we have partner um, caterers as well and mm -hmm. localized and sounds. But um, it's not a package yet. So I feel like... That's something we can we need to improve on, and some resorts have already. Do you plan on investing more on the packages, as you've said? Like, do you, does the Luis Resort plan to buy sound systems, light systems, and catering services? Um, if we're talking about providing it, like internally, we already have that. Mm -hmm. Maybe not because we already have trusted suppliers for mm -hmm. that. Okay, okay. So we um. We're planning on continuing that partnership with our okay. suppliers. Okay. Next question is, what makes the Louise Resort stand out against the competitors? Okay. Um, I feel like um, our resort um, is competitive in regards to our pricing. Because okay. we're not, our pricing is not that high uh -huh. um, given the place that very spacious. Big, good for big events, mm -hmm. good for any type of gatherings. So I feel like that is our, that is what we're proud of then with the place. And it's very well working. Mm -hmm. As part of the hospitality industry, Louise Resort deemed marketing as one of the most important factors to determine its success. What marketing methods have you used to put most resort? Uh, we mainly use Facebook. Since we have a lot of guests here, we also capitalize on the word of mouth type of marketing. Mm -hmm. But Miss, among those platforms, 
Do you find any um, the most effective marketing channel or medium that that is more used? Actually, I would I want to say it's Facebook. But then again, we also do get inquiries because so, when people go to our resort as a guest, mm-hmm. um, they're intrigued by the place or they like the place. So that's when we get more inquiries. Through that. feedbacks. Yes. Okay, okay. So how do you develop and implement those marketing strategies into your business? Um, actually, we are not very aggressive in marketing and I feel like that's something that we need to improve it as a business in the business. Like before when the resort started or when it opened, we used to hand brochures only like to people walking or in a very um, old, style. old style of marketing. And I feel like that's something that we need to work on since a lot of businesses or our competitors are doing good marketing already, like utilizing Instagram or TikTok, mm-hmm. like showing the place. I feel like that's something we can work on. But when it comes to implementing your marketing campaigns, do you think that your advertising strategies are successful when it comes to your, your business post? Yes, since we do get a lot of inquiries when we boost our posts on Facebook. And um, although not all of those inquiries turn into clients, but we do, we still do get clients from posting. Okay. But Miss, um, has Louis Resorts ever been used or appeared in any special events like TV shows or filmings? Yes, actually, there are there were two already. So one was Dolce Amare under abs cpn oh. and the other one is Little Nanai under GMA. Louis Resorts' marketing methods have been so effective that the resort has been used for TV shows like Dolce Amore and Little Nanai. Here's the question. How does the Luis Resort compute or record their financial statement? Is it modern or traditional? Um, since we're only a small business, mm-hmm. uh, we do the bookkeeping and tax returns internally. But we do have an external auditor who does the um, annual mm-hmm. uh, audit review. Do you offer special packages or promos for events such as birthdays, weddings, debuts? Um, actually, uh, our business, we only offer the venue for our clients. But we do have partnered or accredited caterers and mobile lights and sounds so that our clients can choose from. Um, we have four accredited caterers and two mobile lights and sounds. But as far as packages, like with the venue and all the other suppliers we don't have it yet do you share your profit with them with the partners yes we get a percentage from them every time they are booked by our clients okay okay but do you think that the services that you provide or that the resort provides can satisfy its guests i think so because we do have a lot of amenities aside from the pool we have the billiard table we have videoki we have a half Court basketball and um, what else? We have an events hall for big events. I feel like it's perfect for any type of gathering. But Miss, when it comes to the continuous income of this of the resorts, the, uh, is it in a good state? Yes, I would say so. Um, I feel like Louise has already made its name, so um, there are a lot of inquiries coming, and especially during peak seasons. We're almost fully booked. Like I think our peak seasons are March, April, May, mm-hmm. and also um, Christmas near near Christmas. And um, thankfully, even though it's lean season, like rainy season in August, September, we still have bookings at least um, at least fifty percent of the month. With that many numbers coming in, is it okay to ask Miss how much? Are you guys earning? Um, actually, uh, it's quite confidential, but I would say that given the 12 years of business, we are doing well. Now, this is serious. Do you think, Miss Kyra, that your resort provides job opportunities to the people? Definitely. Um, we're actually very happy with our employees 
-hmm. So our employees um, are um, we just within our neighbor, our community. Oh, okay. So um, even though they are undergrads or they did not finish um, high school, or, mm -hmm. yeah, um, we just train them. We do have our employees. We provide employment through our community here. Mm -hmm. So most of our employees are from this neighbor neighborhood. And um, even though they're undergraduates, we accept them fully and we train them so they can up their skills. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, we also get, like, for example, we need painting done for the resort here at the We also get it from within the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Freelance. Yes. So you have a good connection both with your employees. Uh, yes. Speaking of our community boomies, do you think um, the Wizards Resorts helped with flourish by attracting um, tourists? I feel like yes, because when we gain customers, we also gain business. So oh. when in gaining business, we can help with the community when they need so. Like for example, like the upkeep of um, the area around us. And also, if they do have events within the subdivision, we can sponsor it. We can help them. We can um, allow them to use our place. It's um, it's good that we can do that for the community. With how much you've invested into this place, this beautiful place, how long was the return of investment? I would say it's around five to eight years. In, within that time. Was it worth it? Definitely, yes. <laughs> you heard it here for thoughts? <laughs> Luis Resort is clearly on a steady positive growth of success, but difficult challenges still stood in their way. The coronavirus pandemic suddenly spread globally. Virus businesses closed down due to lockdowns arising from health and policy regulations. So here again today with Miss Kyra. So Miss Kyra, um, as a business owner, what are the measures you took during the pandemic? Po? Okay, um, so during the pandemic, we had to follow the guidelines given to us by the DOH and the DOT. So we had to put a lot of signages inside the resort, um, um, stating like how they can maintain or safety measures. Sa safety measures like maintain distance, like and then wash your hands and everything. We also needed to provide um, a lot of alcohol yeah, dispensers man. and also all that stuff, and also put markers on the floor so that they can maintain safe distance from each other. So at that time, po, but did the resort close? Yes, unfortunately, oh. we weren't operating at all because we had to close down because. People weren't allowed to go out yeah. of their houses. Anyway. Um, so after the store closed, po, um, what did you feel? Po? Honestly, we all felt scared. We were all taken aback. We didn't know what to do because this is like this is our source of income as well for the family. So of course, we were definitely scared um, because during that time, we had to close down the resort. And of course, we already had people who booked the place in advance yeah. so we had to refund them oh, no. the down payments that they made and um, of course we had to be flexible with our terms because everybody was in need during that time so we um, we, ha we had guests or clients saying that they need the money because of course some some people in their family had COVID and of course we couldn't not give them back their money. Yes. So that's what we did. We refunded a lot. And that is why we were scared because it was depleting our savings or everything in our bank. And also at the same time, we had to give at least some financial assistance to our employees. Because of course, without with the business closed, they didn't have any income as well. So we still had to give them financial assistance. So it was a very scary time. So during that scary time, po, with all those negative feelings and the struggles, how did you cope up with it? Po? Thankfully, when the pandemic, um, when the lockdown, I mean, naglessen yung pagiging strict ng lockdown and parang limited na allowed for gatherings. They allow gatherings already, but at a limited number. 
So of course we had to grab that opportunity immediately. Yeah. So we had to comply um, with the DOH and, and the DOT rather. So lahat yon lahat that the the signages that we needed to put everything in order for us to operate again. Yes. We we did that immediately so we can open again. The Corona pandemic lasted for years. But the lockdowns slowly loosened as years passed with vaccinations spreading. This was an opportunity for businesses to open once again. After the pandemic, Miss, how did you revive or reset up this establishment of yours? Um, when we opened again for to the public after um, the pandemic, mm -hmm. I mean, because during the pandemic, palang we opened na like thirty percent. Uh -huh. Parang ganun kasi, they allow 30% capacity out of care. We, we are 100, 100 pack. So 30% of that, we're allowed na. So technically, we could we have been operating since the pandemic. All all of the operations that you guys were uh, offering to the guests was uh, fully operated? Was... Um Yes, as long as it's within the guidelines given to us by the DOH okay, and the okay. DOT. But like... Do, after the pandemic, how did you ensure the safety and sanitation of the establishment and the guests? Yes, so after the pandemic, um, we had to take extra steps in mm -hmm. our cleaning process. So if, um, all of these were given by the DOH. Mm -hmm. So um, every after guests, I mean, we, we always do it. We clean the bedrooms, everything. The additional steps that we took was we had to disinfect everything. So mm -hmm. we had to... Do, um, Use a UV light okay. and um, the smoke machines where you disinfect you, you you the the room. Mm -hmm. You put a smoke machine there. Fully sanitized. Fully sanitized. Okay. So, so, and that time pa wearing full PPEs while okay. cleaning so that it won't spread if ever there's a virus. Did the number of sales decrease during the pandemic and after? Um, during definitely, mm -hmm. but after I feel like the private resorts are more it's like booming more mm, now it rapidly increased it increased okay. because um, people are more into staycations mm -hmm. where they can have a place a private place just for their own use okay. so I feel like it's beneficial for us who ha mm -hmm. business owners who have a private resort because more and more people are inclined to um, celebrate or gather just you know, just within themselves. Okay. Uh, after we all know that COVID is now gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're not sure, but yeah, most of it. Uh, how is the performance of the resort going? Um, now that mm -hmm. um, we're in the normal present time, present time again. Um, I would say it, before the pandemic, we were doing okay. Mm -hmm. Like the business, everybody is is booking here in the resort. But after the pandemic, I feel like it's the same in a sense that all of our clients still come back mm -hmm. and book. And then of course we gain more clients as well because because the private resort is already booming. And I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of people are putting up their own private resort businesses as well mm -hmm. after the pandemic. How do you deal with that? With people putting up their own private resorts, how does the Luis Resort deal with that? Yeah, I feel like um, what we can do here in Luis is because uh, I think our advantage is our place. Mm -hmm. It's um, spacious and it's good for events and we recently built this air-conditioned event hall for the use of our guests. It's quite nice. And I feel like it's a good place for them to gather. Although the resort went through many difficulties setback, it still managed to operate again. People may have lingering fear to the pandemic, but the Exchange Resort still moved us away for them to escape from fear and problem and exchange to relaxation and happiness. So, Ms. Kyra, is there any plan or a chance for the resort to expand? Um, at the moment, there are no plans, but just because we recently expanded or renovated our event hall, so I feel like that's um, big step. There, yes, that, that's our next step first. That's the next big step for us is mm -hmm. to utilize the event space. Do you plan for more sustainability and prepare, prepare for future measures if any events such as the COVID pandemic might pop up? 
Well, actually, we plan on, I mean, I guess we all learned a lot from the pandemic. And of course, businesses adjusted during the pandemic. And I feel like we are going to carry over what we've learned from the pandemic. And also, I feel like the biggest thing that we, as the business owners, learn is um, instead of having just six months emergency fund for the business, I feel like at least 12 months emergency fund now. Um, what do you think are the possible opportunities for, for the resorts in general? Oh, I feel like ever since the pandemic, or after the pandemic, staycations became more um, sought after. And a lot of families love to gather, um, especially in more spacious areas. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the future, um, resorts will continue to gain business. Okay. So, speaking of in the future, what's the future plan for Luis Resort? Uh, the future plan is hopefully promote more our events place to give out or to give more options of packages to our guests and to utilize more the marketing uh, side or like marketing tools that's readily available for us business owners. Um, do you have any possible innovations for your future guests? Um, not really. Not, not really at the moment, just the, since the event space was only last year, it was only built last year. And I feel like it's a, it's a good um, place already for our guests to um, have more of their events or uh, celebrate more, hopefully with us. As of now, there's no ideas for innovations yet. Yeah, not yet. Luis Resort is a perfect place for vacations, family outings, birthday events, and other special experiences to share with those we love. With its enchanting landscape that could steal people's breath away, it became a fantastic venue to make unforgettable memories. For those seeking an enchanted escape from the hustle and bustle of life, Luis Resort might just be the fitting place for you to visit. This has been our Enchanted Escape! Ha ha ha!